in this we trust. During the 2022 U.S. midterm elections, we forecast the government elections in 33 states and build our own forecasting website to match people's emotion, trust, and intentions before and after elections. This work was published at the Triple E Waste last year, and this work also proves it to us that in 2022, after six years, many people were still mad at 2016 U.S. presidential election forecast because Hillary Clinton was predicted to win, but we know that she did not win. Some other people were mad at us because our 2022 forecast was wrong in Nevada. Consider our win probability of 85%. It means that out of 100 elections, Hillary Clinton was expected to lose 15 of them. So from a probabilistic standpoint, the 2016 U.S. presidential election forecast was not bad at all. However, many people interpret the probabilities deterministically and they denied a probabilistic understanding of the forecast. As a result, seeing Trump winning the election completely destroyed their trust in election forecasts and also part of their trust in electoral systems because they believe the forecast being wrong is evidence for election fraud. All of this motivates our current research. Our goal is to find ways to maintain people's trust in election forecasts over time especially after they see a wrong outcome. To avoid this goal, we explore three directions. The first one is that we can better communicate a probabilistic forecast by exploring different uncertain representations to improve people's understandings of probability distribution. The second direction is that we can try to better communicate the relationship between the forecast and the outcome by using annotations to visually show this calibration. The third direction is that we can apply a probability correction. We adjust the forecast distribution and make it more uncertain to compensate for people's biases in interpreting probabilities. For today, I focus on the first direction because the second and third directions did not give us promising results. We explore four different uncertain representations in this work. The first one is a dot plot. It is a top performing realization in the literature for decision making and uncertainty. Each dot represents one possible election outcome with a 1% of chance. All the 100 dots approximate the normally like forecast distribution for, vote, uh, for electoral college votes. The second realization is intervals, uh, and it is the most trusted realization from our 2022 experiment. The third one is an animation which we call it Palinko. It is designed to let people experience uncertainty. And last, we also include a text representation and we show both the win probabilities and the ranges of possible electoral college votes. To formalize people's trust in these different uncertainty representations, we created an experimental context to get as close as possible to real world elections. We incentivize voting and prime people to think about partisanship. Our participants experienced 10 U.S. presidential elections with different win probabilities and with a mixture of correct and incorrect outcomes. Next, I will briefly walk you through this experiment. So before our 10 elections, I select which candidate I'm going to support in the experiment. Here my example supports Davis, and I have 10 coins right now. Then I see the first election where the forecast says Davis has a win probability of 15%. I can also scroll down and see other information, such as changes of the prediction over time, state level forecast, and state level details. I then decide whether I'm going to vote in this election. Since Davis is unlikely to win, I'm going to choose to abstain from this election. After election day, I see an outcome sampled it from the forecast distribution. Surprisingly, there is one, and I have more coins right now. I then report my trust in the current website, and also select a website for the next election. Here, our website is in a different and representation, and because the current website is wrong, I'm going to choose a different one for the next election. Now, these two questions capture the two kinds of different trust. 
Then in the next direction, the interface is updated accordingly, and this process continues. From this process, we captured, uh, captured voter turnout and also people's attitude to trust. It is my self-reported ratings of trust in arbitration. Most importantly, we captured be people's behavioral trust. It is the probability of selecting arbitration. This behavioral trust reflects people's action, decisions, and their true preference. And this measure could generate real-world consequences. This behavioral trust is going to be my focus for the next four minutes. So we actually conduct three experiments to gradually refine our results. And each experiment contains 10 elections and is essentially a sequential decision-making process. We model this process by assuming that people maintain a latent trust variable in original visualizations, and we update this variable according to what the people have selected in the experiment. These sequential decision-making models were presented as two pages of equations in the paper. I'm very proud of these two beautiful pages and encourage you to check out the paper. But for now, let's move on and look at the results. So overall, text and dot plot are the most trustworthy representations. Given the sequential decision-making model, people's trust is a function of their time point in the experiment. In experiment one, here I aggregate all the 300 participants, and their trust is stable after two or three elections. Eventually, text and dot plot led to a higher level of trust the interval state. I'm going to skip the details of experiments two and three, but of course, all the three experiments, the most trustworthy ones are tax and dot plot. We also observe a strong pattern split in which resistance people trust the most. We aggregate all the 10 elections and divide each experiment by different parties. The results of X2 and 3 are consistent across different parties. But in X1, Democrats trust dot plot the most, while Republicans and other parties' supporters trust tax the most. However, this pardon split is likely explained by educational differences. We divide each party in each, in each experiment by their educational levels. Right now, the x-axis is the highest degree people obtained. Then, of course, all the three experiments, people who have a more advanced degree trust dot plot better, regardless of their partisanship. We know that in recent years, the Democratic Party in the US has more educated supporters. These educational differences could explain the pattern stability we observed previously. With these results and our further thinkings, we give a recommendation for presenting a trustworthy and partisan neutral interface. We recommend a combined tax with thought plot to bridge viewers from different educational backgrounds. And we also recommend adding different options on the website because different users may have different preferences. Finally, if resources permit, designers could add a short survey form on their website to collect users' trust responses. To summarize, the most trustworthy visualizations for presenting US presidential election forecasts are tax and dot plot, and then combine them could get to you a trustworthy and partisan neutral interface. Also, there is a strong pattern split in which transition people trust the most. This pattern split is likely explained by educational differences. And finally, people's attitude towards trusting our visualization is different from their action. These results have direct implications and applications to the incoming 2024 US general elections. Some of our results, like those related to voter turnout, may raise ethical concerns because our website could use our results to encourage voting for a particular party. Well, this sounds like a joke. Uh, I also think this emphasizes on the importance of doing research to develop trustworthy and partisan neutral interface. Our group is working on this, and we have three papers in this session. I'm the first one, and at the end of this session, 
Mandy will tell you the sausage making process for convenient live election results. Thank you so much for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions.